Aloha and welcome to the Matrix of Peace show brought to you by Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Phyllis Bleas, and I'm also the CEO of Peace Through Commerce. Our guest today is calling in from Mozambique. He is Don Larson, the founder of the Sunshine Nut Company, uh, which is also operated in Mozambique. We are discussing how he has learned to co-create peace in Africa with this unique whole systems consciousness raising business model called the Sunshine Approach. Aloha, Don. Bom dia. Como está? Oh, okay, that's Mozambique. Do we say Mozambique? Is that the name of the language? Mozambique, yeah. Mozambique. And in the West, it's more Mozambique. So it would be Mozambique. a C. Mozambique. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, it's lovely to have you. It's midnight your time, I think. Uh, yeah, it's great to be here, regardless of the time. Yes, thank you so much. You're exactly 12 hours on the other side of the world from Honolulu time. So That's correct. So interesting to get perspective there. And I, you know, I'm going to do a little bit of an intro for you because you have an amazing personal story on top of the business story. And I want to give the audience, the viewers, a sense of both. So I'm going to say a few things about that. I'm going to say that you, Don, in 2011, here you are in Pennsylvania, a high-level executive with Hershey Foods. You've given them almost on and off 25 years of your life. You have a young family, and you pull up stakes and move to Mozambique to do an entirely new startup. And then within mm -hmm. seven years, you are named in a number of, under a number of um, track, trackers. One is the Visionary Real Leaders Magazine. You were named one of the 100 top visionary leaders in the world two years in a row. And I think we have a slide for that. Or Yes, hmm. Forbes has done a profile on you and your work. And you were invited to the Aspen Institute's meeting to look at the Mandela Peace model. So mm -hmm. there is a lot going on there. And uh, I want you're going to have a lot of time to talk to us about it. You've done a short video to give us context so we could taste and feel and see and, and hear what's going on for you. And I'd like to screen that right now for a few minutes and then we'll more. sit back and listen to you. It's possible to create a premium food product and transform lives and communities at the same time. We're doing it every day with cashews here in Mozambique. I'm Don Larson, founder and CEO of the Sunshine Nut Company. And I'm Terry Larson, director of social impact. A cashew deteriorates from the moment that it's taken out of its shell. Most cashews, they sit around for three to six months unroasted, getting stale. We roast within three weeks because we're right here in Africa where they're grown. I came to Africa in 2004 as the director of cocoa operations for the Hershey Company. I was one of the largest cocoa buyers in the world and was surprised at the extreme poverty of the African farming communities. So many international companies benefit from the resources of Africa while the people of Africa remain in poverty. In 2011, we sold everything and moved to Mozambique to create the Sunshine Nut Company. The Sunshine Approach is a sustainable business model that brings lasting transformation. We buy our cashews right here among the Mozambican farming communities at fair prices. We roast and package in country, and we hire young men and women, most of whom were abandoned and orphaned in their youth, to run our factories. We sell our cashews at competitive prices in major retail stores. And then 90% of our profits go back to the poor and orphan. 30% to uplift cashew farming communities, like providing medical training and planting new cashew trees to give families an income. 30% goes to the care of orphans and vulnerable children. There are a lot of broken families in Mozambique. Our sunshine houses pair loving widows with orphan children to create new family units. The remaining 30% is invested into new sunshine companies, 
to transform communities across the continent. In 2012, I met the Senhor Don. I was one of the people who were chosen to be part of the group that came to work in Sunshine. É através de Sunshine que eu comecei a ter uma vida melhor. É através da Sunshine que consigo dar o melhor às minhas filhas, à minha esposa, à minha família em geral. Estou muito orgulhoso por mim mesmo, por ser um pai, por ser um pai presente. We do the most amazing cashews, but it's much beyond that. It's like what we can do for our workers and what our workers, they were also orphans, most of them, and what they can do to impact other kids. Wow, Don, I'm really overwhelmed. You know, you and I met about 10 years ago Mm -hmm. In Austin, Texas, when you were just starting this enterprise, I really, I want to ask you a million questions. You know, it's, it's, I don't know how you mobilize so many resources and what we like to say at Peace Through Commerce is sources, that people are not resources, that they're yeah. sources of energy like the sun and, uh, and keep giving. Uh, and it, so you've mobilized all of that. And maybe if I could, we'll get through the whole story. But I want to ask these screaming questions like, are you happy? When did yeah. you find out you were happy? Were you unhappy before? Or are you just more happy now? And as we are watching and listening, think about our lives and our careers, you know, what what motivated you to make such a change? Uh, and how would we know that call? So there's like too many questions there, but where would you like to start? Well, that's a very good start to this, you know, because I was very successful, you know, um, and I got to a point that I was successful at an early age, you know, my early 40s as CEO, um, not of Hershey, but I, I actually left Hershey and built the largest cocoa processing factory in the world to sell to Hershey for a couple of years. And um, at the end of all this, when, when we sold the factory to the largest chocolate maker in the world, I really like was very disillusioned with where I was at. I had a lot of great job offers, but it's like I was unfulfilled. I was not satisfied with life. I had every toy I mean, I had a hot air balloon, I had my Porsche, I had, you know, just about anything anyone ever wanted and considered successful, including a family, a nice house with a pool, just every toy. And that is not what makes you happy, you know, and most people strive their whole lives wanting to get that, thinking that it will make them happy. And what it really is, I think the the, the midlife crisis comes in here, you know, and and it's really... A, I don't think it's necessarily midlife crisis of, of uh, substance. I think it's more uh, ingrained in, are you doing what you were created to do? And, um, and so what, what I did is I went on a quest to, to find that out. And one of the things that it resulted in is assessing um, – do I want to have success in life or do I want to have significance? Do I want to lead a life of, uh, of, of a legacy? Okay. And I had a good role model. The role model was Milton Hershey, you know, who, who was the founder of Milton Hershey's, uh, the company, um, Hershey Chocolate. But he, uh, at the end of his career, he spent all of his time at an orphanage that he and his wife started up. And throughout his career, he took care of the farming communities, he took care of his employees, and then he took care of orphans. And so really what I did is I decided I want to leave a legacy. I want to do something to help the world, to promote peace, and to, and to, to leave things better than uh, when I started. And so we moved to Mozambique, not knowing anyone, to implement uh, using a food company the same way that Hershey has done by 
providing for hundred, probably hundreds of thousands of orphans, one of which was my father-in-law that was an orphan in the 1950s. But Milton Hershey gave his fortune and his company 100 years ago to uh, an orphanage. And that orphanage now is the controlling interest of an $8 billion chocolate company. So what we're doing is we've taken that concept completely separate from Hershey, and we're using cashews to take care of the farming communities of Mozambique, the orphan population of Mozambique, and my employees. Wow. I hmm. didn't know that uh, about you, about Hershey. So your wife's father was an orphan that was supported by the Hershey's orphanage, supported by right. the that owns the controlling interest in Hershey. Yeah, of the chocolate company. Wow. Yep, and uh, that's the reason I joined Hershey. And it's very honest, very ethical company. I rose through the ranks there very quickly. And it was largely because we were working for a purpose. And I think, um, you know, companies and, and business has gotten away from that. You know, in the 70s, a guy named Milton Freeman, he's the one that said the sole purpose of a company is to put money in the share in the stockholder's pocket. And after that, a lot of these things went away. All the philanthropic aspects of companies and taking care of the, the stakeholders and all the, the, the value chain, it went away. And so as a private company, we're wanting to bring that back and to do it in my, you know, in my own way and, and in a way that promotes peace and promotes prosperity. And promotes dignity and opportunity. And the principal tenet of our model is we want to transform lives, not just uh, not just uh, you know create employment necessarily, but transform people's lives for the better. So you know, let's do let's take some time now and look at those principles and walk through what you call as a business model the sunshine approach. And then what yep. we're going to do is just overlay some of those principles on the matrix of peace, whole systems model of society that peace through commerce it, it advances in the world, working on difficult social, emotional, economic, and sustainable questions. And we're going to show uh, our, our viewers how your approach, like a Christmas tree, turns the lights on for every sector of society and every intersection of justice, prosperity, and sustainability. And at least where you are operating in Africa, because Africa is still has a lot of developing and underdeveloped areas, but in the pockets right. where Sunshine Approach is breathing, living, acting, you are fostering long-term peace uh, from this whole systems model assessment and view and map of your work in the world. So let, let's talk That's about some great. of those, yeah, some of those principles that we've got a slide on that. Maybe the guiding get, principles, yeah. So yes. the guiding principles, you know, yeah, I like to say our cashews are roasted hot with hope, opportunity, and transformation. And that uh, the business model is um, value-driven business where dignity, opportunity, excuse me, dignity and love community come together with excellence. And then it wouldn't be there if, if everyone didn't work in unity. You know, as part of your model, you talk about the values unite and that beliefs divide, you know, and it's the values that it transcends beliefs and religions and everything. You know, when you have these these principles that we have, they are pretty much across uh, different belief, um, excuse me, different belief uh, value systems. And so we've become very successful in, in, in bringing unity and bringing cooperation and bringing peace by having everyone involved in the value chain of cash is uh, involved in, in a dignified and uh, in loving way. So what I like about that slide and what you're talking about is this is hard stuff where values unite, but how you 
operationalize those values, what your belief in, whether God is Allah or a Christian version of God, or there is no God, you know, or yeah. it might, they might believe there's a greater power, but not anthropomorphic or a deity. So we might all believe there's a greater power, but we have very different beliefs about what that power is, you know, defining it. And so when you talk about hope and opportunity, transformation, dignity, love, community, excellence, and unity, when someone walks in the door, they can be all about those values. That's correct. So, and, and it really it, transcends religions. It, it really, it, 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 it's, those are common values that unite people and, and that bring peace. So and, then, and everyone, what I find is everyone wants to be part of doing something good. And mm -hmm. so those who don't are usually the ones that are creating the problems. And we do have a slide on, on challenges there. I mean, we are addressing fundamental challenges. Um, and we'll get to that in the future. Let's look at the um, next, yeah, let's look at the next slide. So this is putting feet on the ground. So this is yeah. actualizing beliefs about those values. So what are we seeing here about this? And so just the way we talk about it at Peace Through Commerce, engagement is the realization of your beliefs it's the values yeah. are one thing but then how do we act them out and so tell us a little bit about these engagement um points yeah. of contact well, you know you know mozambique the government on one hand says that 80 percent of the population okay is involved in agriculture and then the statistics of the government say that 99.9% .9 of all agricultural activities are smallholder farmers or subsistence farmers. So really what you have is people that are growing food to survive and there's no employment at all. And there's been a, a, a conflict up in the North for going on six, seven, seven years now um, where there's been an Islamic insurgency in that region. And we were called up um, a couple of years ago, to bring our model. And that model um, is one where we go from the very farming communities all the way to the fork. We, we sell all the way to the consumer from, from our subsistence farming communities. There are 1.4 million subsistence farmer, cashew farmers in Mozambique. And what we did is we went up to the displaced camps, and there's quite a, a lot of them right so now. We're seeing one here now. Some of the, these yeah, camps so, are where the tents are, so people live there. And you that's say correct. Displaced? they've been displaced from their home. Okay. And so the, initially, we went up there and we had um, meetings with the leaders of uh, within those displaced camps, and we realized that we didn't want to move into an area and force people to go back home for employment where it might be an unsafe condition. Right. So what we did is then we transitioned and went to where the people had returned, where there was military presence there. It was a much more safe environment. People had returned home. There was nothing for them to do. They were devastated by the, the conflicts, and they just needed uh, a solution that would bring them into, you know, opportunity and dignity and, and uh and well-being and prosperity. And so that's what we did. We, we moved into um, uh, an area. Um, the next slide is, is where we go into the, the various projects that we do. Mm -hmm. um, so just so to slow you down a minute. So you've got this agricultural program going on where you're actually planting cashew seeds, you're harvesting. And just so that folks know, Whole Foods carries uh, your cashews we saw a picture of it in the video and i think in honolulu i've seen them on the shelves uh they're in Correct. Texas. so you know we're looking at these agricultural farming communities and 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 it's it's just amazing to me that they're sitting on the shelves at local whole foods markets and other That's and other correct. major high-end uh retail areas so that whole operation is where most businesses stop. I mean, that's a lot. And you've got high quality uh, products that get to the consumer while they're still fresh, in excellent condition. And I could go on and on and on about that. But now I'm seeing on this slide, homes, 
villages. This is where you get into the whole ecosystem of society. And right. you make this a focus. That's so, correct. Yeah, I think the key is we first needed to develop a brand and a market. Mm -hmm. And that's what's absent from most projects that are happening in sub-Saharan Africa and, and really in developing nations. People start these projects, but there's no one to sell to. And so we spend a lot of time and what I give Whole Foods all the credit in the world. The very first thing that happened before I had factory equipment or anything is I had one of the owners of Whole Foods back in 2012, I think, come and visit me and interview me. And he's like, what's this crazy guy who had everything in America doing in Mozambique? And it developed a really good relationship with Whole Foods. And they were my first retailer. So right. in 2014, later 2014, when I sent product, it went into the Whole Foods market and it has remained there for the last uh, 10 years. Now we've developed you know, markets in different places in the world and in a lot of other retailers in the U.S., but it's Whole Foods that are, are the real deal um, well, and have been with me since the start. And let me, let me add that the co-founder co of Whole Foods Market, John Mackey, is the co-founder of Peace Through Commerce. Ah, there I we go. And, and my, <laughs> my cor the, our corporate meetings were held downtown in Austin at their, at their headquarters. Uh, where John would come in the room, and then the two doors down was Whole Planet Foundation, and I'm just Correct. Phil Sansone and his team. I'm wondering, was it Whole Planet Foundation that came and took a look, or was it the retail side, or both? No, it was the retail stores. But now yeah. I, I have been in working with Whole Planet Foundation. I was just in to see them um, when I was back in the U.S. a couple few weeks ago, um, mm -hmm. and so. We're looking to find a way to cooperate together and where they can do their microfinancing uh, with Whole right. Planet Foundation, you know, but but we take care of, you know, it, it, that slide that you showed, there's the three areas. There's right. the orphan care, there's the employee care, and then there's the village care, you know, so those are the things that uh, that we're doing. Well, then in, we're, we're we've got about five minutes left in the show, and I want to if we could show the next slide, and then when people come back to this show, they can freeze the screen and look at your graphic or yeah. just just sort of a business. This is the business plan, right, in right. very user-friendly terms that, can, that integrates your orphanage on steroids approach to what you're also feeling committed to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, Milton Hershey would have been so proud of you because you're already, you're doing the orphanages and the employment and the projects. I mean, you're, you're, it's on steroids, right. the addition. And is this profitable to the base? That's always a question. Can, can business owners afford to work on the whole system? Is that, doing well by doing good. Is there a yeah. quality? Well, Mel Melton Hershey to... proved that out, that doing yeah. good really worked out well for him. And I think that's the case with every company. Now, we've gone further. I mean, just having the business is, is good enough. Now, we've elected to give the majority of our profits our, our shareholder distribution, you know, which is what goes to our family, um, back into the foundation to do our philanthropic work. And so, so that's stop right there. So when people slow this down, that very on the on the left hand side, the call on uh, when we had the bullet points, you call out donating 90% of distributed profits to. And so when you want to come back and look at this, because we won't have enough time to really focus on, uh, you know, it isn't the question isn't how do you make money when you're giving it away? It's almost how do you not make money when you're giving it away? In a reciprocal society, uh, in in a pro that's what nature does. It's reciprocal. What yeah. it gives, it needs back. And uh, you know, Robin uh, Kimmerer has written the book Braiding Sweetgrass, where she talks about these reciprocal ecosystems. So really, you're making the case for how can you not do better when you return, reciprocate into the environment and into your people what you're what you receive yeah so, I so did well, it, it really gets down to the point of 
where do I want to spend my resources? It, right. I tried different possessions, and it did not make me happy. I was not satisfied. Contrary to what most people will make you believe, where it really comes down to is when you take your resources and you help others. And that is what's brought true joy and true uh, the abundant life, uh, you know, for us. And it's been to see all the orphanages. You know, we have eight orphan homes right now surrounding our factory in the in the local villages. We have over 30 orphans. I'd like to get to the point where we have hundreds of homes and thousands of orphans in our care, like Milton Hershey has done, but hundreds of thousands probably over the the last century. Well in the little time we have left, let's look at slide 14, Michael, if you could, and where this is, you are addressing fundamental issues uh, using the sunshine approach. And this slide does a good job of, of showing it, you know, that, so this people can, they're just going to have to hold off. And what I want to show is the slide, uh, slide 11 and show from a matrix of peace standpoint, how the Mozam, how your sunshine approach uh, in Mozambique covers the public, private, and civil society sectors using those values and beliefs and actions. And then the slide, two slides above that, show how this approach looks in Africa. Uh, the slide 11, Matrix of Peace, Whole Systems Model, side by side approach of what you're doing versus many other businesses in Africa. And, you know, developing Africa, we have the three sectors, if they're lucky, but they're not intersecting. Using your approach, you're co-creating prosperity, justice, and sustainability in how you're addressing the needs, the best practices in the public sector on governance, in the private sector on business leadership, and then in the civil society sector, which is the homes, the schools, the culture. So you're you're supporting all three, and that's how you light up the whole matrix with mm -hmm. interdependency and long-term peace. And with that, thank you, Don Mahalo. I'm going to have to leave it there. I want to let everyone know that you have been watching the Matrix of Peace show at Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Phyllis Bleese, and CEO of Peace Through Commerce. We've been discussing the sunshine business approach to doing business in Africa in a way that furthers justice, prosperity, sustainability, and long-term peace with our guest, Don Larson. Mahalo, Don, for joining us. Mahalo to our viewers for tuning in. Aloha.